All right, so now that we've found our comfortable seat, start to draw some circles with your nose in one direction. I ran into another student slash, you know, friend, and she's a teacher, and she was saying that she couldn't believe how tight her shoulders have been. So I'm gonna do a little bit extra neck stuff because I think there is a tendency to kind of get back into this computery looking at the screen mode for some of us. So these nice big circles. If you're hearing any cracks or crunches, make your circle smaller and really see if you can articulate through the neck here, imagining that you are drawing a full round circle, not an oval or a line. Switching directions. And then as you're switching directions, notice if one shoulder starts to creep up, see if you can keep those shoulders down the back. Maybe make three more circles with the nose in this direction. And then we'll drop the chin to the chest and we're gonna press the arms out like you're saying stop. So before you even lift the head up, really try and feel that stretch at the palm, right at the wrist there, like you're really trying to press away. And again, notice if your shoulders are starting to creep up at all, slide them back down. And that's one kind of nice thing about having our, um, I know most of you have your video off, but if you did choose to have your video on, that would be okay. So then you can start to see yourself a little bit. But maybe start to look left and right now as you're feeling that extension all the way from the wrist up through the arm. Maybe this one arm of mine is feeling extra tight so I can feel this all the way in the back of the hands as well. We've been doing lots of work around the house. My arms are really, really, really tired. We'll go maybe once or twice more as you look left and right. And then we're gonna interlace the fingers in front of us and start to draw figure eights with the interlaced fingers in one direction. And then go the other direction, which is always a little tricky. No, I'm not sure which way I went. So we're gonna repeat this pressing of the arms out, fly the shoulder blades down, and then nod the head up and down. Maybe feeling a little bit more buoyancy underneath the armpit. And after this last nod, we'll keep the head down, crossing the right arm in front of the body, and then just capture right at the elbow as you drop the right ear to the right shoulder. Shoulder blades still heavy, like they're sliding down into your back pocket. We'll rock the chin to the chest, sweep the arms back out, and then switch sides. Sweep the arms back out. And this time we're gonna interlace the fingers behind the head. And as you peel the elbows open, just let the skull drop back. So there's a tendency to wanna push the chest out. And it might just take a minute to get the spine situated as we're just working with the neck. We'll move with breath. We'll inhale as you come down so that as you're inhaling, you're starting to fill the back side of the body with breath and then exhale. Open and release. Inhale. Chin to chest. Exhale open and release. And you're more than welcome to do this 
open mouth breath. It's a little bit more cooling. And go at your own pace here. Let's do three more. Last one. And then as you're opening up, just let the arms come down and we'll take a soft twist to one side. So really soft, don't necessarily need to be cranking the chest. The fingertips could even just be next to your side waist little bit of pressure on the opposite side. And I'll drop the head back and down to get that nice big stretch on the large neck muscle there. Two more breaths and a sinking down, feeling the low half of the body plant down towards the ground. And go ahead and switch sides. Get yourself set up with your twist and then drop the head down. Of course, if you're up on the block, this is going to be a little bit further. Two more breaths here. Just let the head be nice and heavy. And we'll unwind and slide forward, pop off of your blocks. So we'll use them in a moment. So keep them towards the top of your mat. And we'll move to our all fours. Planting the hands and just start a little soft cat cow wave through the spine. Inhale up, exhale back. So our regular breath here with the cat cow. Let's get some fluidity happening all the way through the spine. And as you can see, I'm making this more dynamic by pressing my hips back slightly and traveling forward slightly on the inhale. Two or three more rounds. And then pause right here in the middle. We're gonna step the right foot back, push into the ground to lift the right foot up and bend the knee, draw a big circles, start to get some movement happening in the hip. Once we've gone maybe four or five circles with the knee in one direction, switch directions. And then we're going to tend the right fingertips or use your block as you step the right foot forward. So we'll take our second block and place it right in front of the left side. So if you need a moment to find that block. Now we're gonna come forward. So the left side's gonna rest on top of this block here. And you're just gonna let the head hang. So rather than trying to dump all the weight down, we're actually stopping the hip from collapsing. So you find a little bit of a lizard lunge stretch. If you wanted to, you could place both hands to the inside of that right foot. You could make the, your stance a little bit wider by heel toeing the right foot off to the side. <clears throat> and then we'll take the front block. And if it's not quite close, go ahead and grab it. And you're gonna place it back underneath where that right hip is gonna land as we shift our weight back. 
And you might even want to turn this block up a little bit higher so that you end up kind of sitting on top of it as we move into this half leg extended lunge. So don't worry about the chest coming over the thigh, just finding a beginning stretch to the back of that right leg. Of course, if this is too low for the left knee, then you're up a little bit higher and that's just fine. You wanna keep the top of the right foot soft rather than flexing. And then we'll shift our weight back forward, perhaps taking the block with you as you slide the right knee underneath the right hip. We'll move our low block in front of the right knee as we just kind of shift the hips, maybe a little cat cow. And then we'll step the left foot back, press the ground away to lift the left foot up, hip to the heel, heel to the hip, big circles. Couple more. Switch directions. And then we'll step the left foot forward and use that top block if you like. <clears throat> and begin to shift your weight forward, dropping down. <clears throat> Make as much room as you need for the hips so that you're feeling like you're getting a bit of a stretch to the thigh, but that the hips are not collapsing down. And if a block is handy here, use your block. One more breath and then. Start to bring the weight back, perhaps the block hanging out underneath the left hip as you forward fold. Take your time to find what's right for this side of the body. It's nice and passive, so. This leg feels a little bit tighter. My toes are coming up a little bit more. And begin to transition back to your all fours. Move the blocks out of the way. To travel through a cat cow or two. And we'll take the big toes to touch. And really start to reach the hips back. You want to get a nice stretch at the low back. You could tent the fingertips as you drop the head down. Or have the palms down or take the arms wider as you move into your blossom. So here we're thinking about extending and reaching the spine and forward and pressing the hips back. So if you need to come up a little bit to press those hips back and then come back forward, go ahead. But this is really attempting to get to the low back. And then we'll slide the hands back towards the knees. Shift your weight back forward and separate the feet. And we'll get into that shoulder opener by reaching the right arm out to the side or whichever arm you'd like to first. Palm facing up, drop down. And you can make this a little bit more dynamic. You could press the ground away, shift your weight back and forth, take the knees wider, bring the hips back more. So just make it your own. Maybe reach that top arm forward. Just remember that the weight is, for the, is on the shoulder. You should be able to comfortably lift the head here. And 
We'll stay for another two or three breaths just to get some little, maybe a change, just to get a different experience perhaps than you're used to just plopping down into this. I've been liking pressing the ground away and doing this little twist here. And in your own time, back to center and just switch sides. Playing again, playing with this, pressing away. Two or three more breaths. And then come on back up. So we're gonna continue on with our lunge series turn. Having your blocks close, okay, both at the top of the mat. We'll press the right foot back, press the ground away to lift the foot and step the right foot forward. So we're going to take the right hand to the right knee and we're going to get a little bit more movement here by drawing big circles with the knee in one direction. So we're pressing our, bringing our weight forward and back. Rolling to the outside of that foot, switch directions. And then get yourself set up and that might mean we're taking the blocks behind you a little bit. As you bring the weight back, you can look down to see, <clears throat> trying to get that back hip over the knee as you tuck the tailbone and come up. We'll move back to this. I feel like it was so close. We'll move back <clears throat> to the interlacing of the fingers behind the skull. So once you get the hips all set, we're at 90 degree angles. You'll interlace the fingers behind the head and let the head drop back. And on your inhale, lift the navel as you curl forward. So you might feel this. I can feel this on the front hip here. And exhale, come back. Inhale, roll forward, chin to chest, exhale, back. It's kind of amazing that just this move of the chin, I can feel it all the way down that front hip. So to get steady here, the big toe ball mound and heel are pressing into the ground, should be able to lift those front five toes. Maybe one or two more of these. And then we're going to come forward. We'll take a twist here, but we're going to twist open towards the left rather than this cross twist. You might want your block press down into the ground and open up. So this is a place where the knee might want to come in or out. See if you can keep the knee right over the ankle. And if that top arm reaching up, you can reach it forward and that will get a little bit more length along the side waist or behind you. Let the head be heavy, close the eyes. We're gonna stay here for another two or three breaths. And then just roll forward, back to your all fours. This time we're gonna take the inner thighs to touch and swish, swish the hips left and right. Hips could touch the ground, just get a little space. And then go ahead and switch sides. Stepping the left foot back, lifting the left leg up, come on forward. Left hand to the left knee, big circles. Switch directions. And 
and then get yourself all arranged in your 90 degree angle low lunge, the tailbone tuck, lifting up, interlace the fingers behind the skull. And again, once you get that, we're gonna inhale, come forward and exhale, lift up and release back. So another way to really get the low half of the body anchored down is that I'm actively pressing the top of the back foot into the ground. So even my toes are activated here. Two more. And go ahead, come forward. And I'll take a big, maybe spiral with that right arm if you like the space. You could even just rest your head in your hand as we twist the chest to the right. Let the head hang. Unwind yourself, plant the hands, slide the left knee back to meet the right. And we'll sway the hips back and forth before we release the whole belly onto the floor. We're gonna be moving into a sphinx and forearm series. Gotcha. So you can just get settled on your belly for a moment. Giving the low back a moment to release and relax. And then start to bring the forearms underneath parallel. Actively draw the inner arms towards one another, gripping with the fingertips. Let the low back be nice and heavy. So I'm even bringing my toes up to really stretch out. And then press the ground away. And we'll do these neck rolls here. You can feel really good. Rolling through the neck, chin tuck. Couple more. So now the top half of the body firmly anchored, just like we were in our lunge. We want 90 degree angles. So that gives the bones that sensation of stacking. And then lifting the head, we're going to curl the toes under and start to shimmy the hips forward and slide the knees under the hips so that we're in puppy downward facing dog. That means that the forearms are planted, the head hangs, and now we're going to press the ground away as if you're catting the back. Very similar to downward facing dog, we're going to do our forearm downward facing dog. Keep pressing the ground away and then curl the toes under. You may just want to do one leg at a time, kind of walking, or both legs as you lift the hip. If you're getting any pain on the shoulders, just stay with the knees on the, on the floor. You can wiggle the hips just like you would if you were on the hands. Two more breaths. Again, we're pressing into the upper back. Stacking the, uh, the shoulders over the elbows. And then drop down. We'll take the knees wide. Reach the hips back. Forehead to the floor.
From here, we're gonna move back to seated on our bottom and walk the hands back, swing the legs around and find a comfortable seat. So that was a lot of work for the shoulders. We're just gonna open the shoulders up a little more and then do it again. So from your comfortable seat, we're gonna go across the body. Start with the palm facing up as you twist, twist and reach back looking for those fingertips. And then you're gonna flip the palm over and come across the body. So we're lifting and reaching and then coming across. Nice and slowly, you'll see that the palm comes up. I'm just trying to work through these shoulders. And you're more than welcome to play with the breath here. If you like this inhale open, go ahead and do that and exhale across. Or you could exhale, I'm sorry, inhale. And if you inhale with the palm facing down, you'll notice that you get a little bit more space at the back. So you inhale and then exhale, which is what we were doing with our um, neck rolls. So it's just fun to play with these different breath and body motions, especially when we get kind of stuck in that always inhale open and exhale compress. Last round on this side and then come back to center. And so, I'll just ask that you switch which shin is in front, unless you had, of course, the legs out. And then we'll go second side. Remember, the palm is away. You should be able to feel that rotation happening in the shoulder. Again, if you've been inhaling open, exhale close, see what it's like to inhale and exhale open. We'll just take three or four more so you feel about even on both sides. And from here, we will again slide onto our bellies. You can unlace, slide forward, release to the floor, and get the low half of the body nice and stable. Make a pillow for the forehead, look left and right. Bring those elbows underneath, plant the hands. Grip with the fingertips, actively roll the inner arms towards one another. Again, if this is enough for you this morning, that's great. Or we'll start to press and lift the hips, walking the knees in. Curl the toes under. Again, maybe it's just one leg and then the other, where you're just letting the head drop down. Press the ground away like your cat. Curl the toes under and lift the hips. So this might be quite enough, and that's fine. Or we're just going to do a couple of these nose dips. Again, if you're getting any pain in the shoulder, then do not do this, because you'll be really sad. <laughs> you'll be like, but I thought his shoulders were stretching out. So, but you could come forward and press back. We're only going to do five. You'll just riff, shift your weight forward and back. And then drop back down into puppy downward facing dog. Let the head be heavy. And walk the hands back so that you're seated on tops of the heels. Go ahead and grab your two blocks again and place them with the short edge against one another towards the top of the mat. I'll just give you a moment to get there. So we're gonna release the shoulders and neck from that, pressing away, 
for our mark. Come back forward and bring the elbows on top of your block. For me, my hands naturally just want to come together. And then you're going to scoot yourself back so that the head drops towards the chest. Not on the other side, but towards the chest. And just let the head hang here for a moment. And this could be enough for the shoulders and it might even feel too tight and you want to separate the arms. So you're paralleling the arms and letting the head drop down. Or those palms are touching, you'll bring the thumbs towards the nape of the neck. So this can feel kind of intimidating the first couple of times that you do it, just because it's, um, Releasing it's a little counterintuitive to let the head just hang here. But if you can, we'll stay for another five breaths. Last inhale and exhale. And then to come out of this the safest way, if the heart, hands were behind the nape of the neck, let the arms come down, lift the head, and instead of trying to press yourself up, just start to slide the knees towards the blocks. And then roll up. So from here, we'll swing the legs around. And we'll extend out through one leg. And I'm going to suggest that you bring a block underneath the knee as we forward fold. Because what we're looking for here is a nice big stretch behind the thigh. So we'll take one of our blocks, just use the corner here underneath the back of the knee. And of course, if this opposite knee is coming up, you might want to block that knee as well. And then we'll forward fold. A lot of the time we're pressing the chest forward. Here, just start with the head heavy. Starting to release all the way through the top of the leg. Supporting the knee. And then maybe start to crawl forward a little bit. Another couple of breaths. <clears throat> and walk your hands up. So option number one for this next, and we're gonna go a little bit deeper, is to take your second block, if it was not underneath the knee, you're gonna lift underneath the leg or slide <clears throat> that first block so that you just have one block underneath the leg. And you could be on the slow height, medium height, or the high height. Now, we're gonna flex the foot, lift the chest, and come forward. And there's a tendency to wanna to compress and lock the knee. So if you can soften the knee, that might mean coming back, reaching forward, and forward folding. If you can get the, <clears throat> the chest forward a little bit more. As you can see, I'm not coming forward too much to, to get the sensation behind the leg. Then the support, getting a good stretch behind the knee. Walk yourself up. We'll bring the one foot down 
and just switch sides. Starting with support underneath the back of the knee, maybe the opposite bent knee, and just allow yourself to pour forward. the hips nice and soft, the weight of the body dropping down. Walking yourself back up. Again, you're using and prefer both the knee and the heel to have a block. Go ahead or finding the right height for this leg. Flexing. So there's kind of a trick to this, and we flex sometimes. You just want to engage in the thigh. If you can soften the thigh, reach the chest forward. And if you're up here and you're getting it, great. If you're on the the block is all the way flat and you can feel this, that's great. It's wherever you are today. For at least two more breaths, maybe three. This feels really good to me because I've been doing all this up down work, you know, going to the ground, doing my gardening, popping back up. And then we'll take the leg off, plant the feet, and then go ahead and roll onto your back. You can wiggle the tailbone when you get down, sway the knees. We'll just practice a regular figure four here. If you like using the block, you could take the block underneath the left foot and then just cross the right knee over, especially if you're looking for a little bit deeper stretch, but completely bringing the whole leg arrangement towards the chest doesn't quite feel right for you. And just take a moment, maybe sway the hips back and forth until you get that sensation of the low back pressing to the ground. You can take a block, maybe your second block, and put a little pressure on the inner right thigh. We're just going to hang out here. You can let the spine drop down, look left and right, maybe crawl the shoulders up. And if this is your side where you feel pretty comfortable just as you are, you're not feeling much of anything, then go ahead, maybe lift the left knee up. I, however, am getting a nice stretch right in my low back here. I'm gonna stay down here. As we follow the breath for another seven, so that, like I said, we're hanging out. Another seven rounds of breath and feel free to change between maybe in a moment or so you might like to lift the leg. So make it your own. That's two breaths, another five breaths.
One more inhale and exhale. If you have the block underneath the left foot, maybe you want to keep it there. We're going to move into half happy baby with the right leg. We'll hug the right knee into the chest. And this is an opportunity to use your strap either on the foot or behind the thigh as we draw the leg towards the outside of the body, trying to get that knee towards the armpit. So notice what happens in the low back. It's going to want to peel up, keep pressing down. You can feel the whole sacrum on the floor. And if it's accessible, you'll hold on to the foot, but only if you can rock. See, I'm rocking my shoulder down. Only if you can rock the shoulder down too. If that's too far, then use that strap. And we'll hang out here. So there's this the internal play that's happening where we're pressing the tailbone down and away towards the other end of the mat and the shoulders nice and heavy. Two more breaths. Then we'll move this into a twist so you could scoot your block off to the side if you had it. If you wanted to, you could extend the opposite leg as you assist the right knee across the body. Feel free to roll all the way to the left. Feel free to curl the chest back open or take a little roll back and forth until you find the right spot for you. And we're hanging out, so another four breaths. And if the right knee isn't coming to the ground, of course, a block underneath the knee is great. to make your way back. We're just going to pause, bring the arm down, scoot all the blocks out of the way, just let the, all of that hip work settle into the right leg. Go ahead and switch sides. We're starting with our figure four, maybe a block underneath the right foot. Taking your time. So we're hanging out. Get all of the little pieces together. Back feeling nice flat on the mat. Maybe needing Walk the shoulders up, press the inner thigh away, different side of the body, perhaps the side you're going to want to hold the knee towards the body. Let's start with this 90 degree angle. And when you bring the leg up, if you notice that the leg is coming back from 90 degrees, you've probably gone too far. So you'll unwind. Just do it again. Stay 
Inhaling for another five breaths. Scotch. One more inhale and exhale. And then go ahead and take your time as you transition to your half happy baby. And watch for the low back peeling up and it pressing down into the mat. Four more breaths. Nice big inhales and exhales. Working on filling the entire body with breath. One more deep inhale and exhale. And start to create your twist. Feel free to use a block underneath the knee, going all the way off to the side, whatever is good on this side. Being a good stretch, breath into the left side waist, allowing the right side of the body to melt down to the ground. Two more inhales and exhales. And then we'll roll back onto the back and take a neutral body for a moment. Slide your way back. Legs extended, arms to either side. So you're more than welcome to just hug the knees into the chest and lift the soles of the feet up. Or if you prefer, you can stack one or two blocks underneath the low back for a modified shoulder stance. I'm gonna stack one block. <laughs> and then hug the knees in and flex the soles of the feet up. So if you're finding it a bit hard to get that full flexation, utilizing the strap here just as a guide, so that you have something that you're pushing away can be really useful. Feel free to wiggle the hips. And then of course, now's a time when lots of us are getting lots of allergies, so we might have some congestion happening in the sinuses. So if you're feeling pressure um, in the face, then just bend the knees or take the legs down a little bit, make it less intensive. And just close the eyes. And stay with the sensation of pressing the feet towards the sky and letting the spine drop down towards the earth. Heart a little bit raised above the head. Big, long, deep breaths.
And you're more than welcome to stay here a little bit longer. Or if you're ready, bring the legs down. If you have the block underneath the low back, press away, lift the hips, and we'll slide the legs out. If you wanted to wrap yourself or place the blanket on your feet, go ahead. As you transition down into this Shavasana neutral body, I'll just work through the body, connecting with the toes up through to the fingertips. Go ahead and just take notice of the tips of all the toes on the right foot, maybe even wiggling them. And then all the toes on the left foot. And underneath the toes, the soles of the feet. As if someone was just giving the body a nice big brush, connecting with the tops of the feet, the soles of the feet. 360 degrees, the outsides and insides of the feet. And keep working your way up, shins, calves, backs of the legs, backs of the knees. Notice if you're still holding tension anywhere, maybe squeezing and hugging the muscles to the bone and then releasing. And around the hips, belly. Up the chest. <laughs> Tips of the fingers, palm, between the fingers, keep going up the arms, the armpits, underneath the eyes and the face, the back of the neck until you've got that connection, whole body. And just watch the whole body breathe for five more breaths. Or feel free to stay as you are, or maybe a full body stretch, wiggle the hips, shift your weight back and forth, slide the heels towards the hips, maybe a little sway of the knees back and forth until you press yourself up to a seat. And if you're coming up to a seat, make yourself comfortable. roll the shoulders down again, draw circles with the nose, whatever you need to do. And then we'll take a big reach out to the side, let the head drop back, and then draw the hands together at heart center. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. Take a moment to thank yourself for coming to practice this morning. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for joining me.